Hello YouTube watchers. Uh, thank you for watching our channel, Frankert Auto. Today I'm going to try to explain how a two-stroke engine works and uh, the internal parts of it. First of all, I want to thank Ray73 from Thingiverse who designed the model of a two-stroke, a 3D model of a two-stroke engine. So a big difference between a two-stroke and a four-stroke engine is obviously on a four-stroke engine, piston has to go twice up, twice down. That's why it's called a four-stroke. On a two-stroke, the piston has to only go once up, once down to complete the cycle. Okay, some other differences is a four-stroke engine, because it stores oil, it's stored in the crankcase, so it would have oil ring and two compression rings. On a two-stroke engine, it doesn't have any oil. The oil is not stored in the, in the crankcase. The oil is put into the gasoline before it's mixed into the gasoline before it's uh, put into the gas tank. Okay, and this one is piston is wedge shape. I'll explain later why is it wedge shape. It plays a big, pretty big role. The two stroke, because it doesn't have any oil in the crankcase, so this ca engine can be operated at any angle. You don't have to hold it straight up. If you hold a four stroke engine at an angle, the oil doesn't lubricate the engine properly. This one, because it's mixed in the gasoline, it, it can be operated at any angle. Okay, so uh, it doesn't have any actual valves. It's only got ports. It's got intake port and exhaust port. Uh, this type of engine is mostly used on, um, um, lawn, not sorry, lawnmowers. It's used on um, weed eaters or chainsaws, mostly on the chainsaws, okay? A two-stroke engine is called a two-stroke engine because two strokes of piston. The piston goes up once, piston goes down once. And in that, it goes through the full cycle, okay? It fires in just two strokes of the piston, once up, once down. So a two-stroke engine doesn't really have any actual valves, okay? So few parts, the main parts on a two-stroke engine, you have a piston, you got two compression rings, have a connecting rod, you have a crankshaft, okay? And then you have ports. You have intake port and you have exhaust port, okay? Another main thing that plays a role here is something called a reed valve, okay? That's a reed valve, so we'll talk about all these things in a minute. So here is a, a actual engine, dismantled actual engine. So you have the same parts on it. You got the crankshaft right here. You, you can see the connecting rod, which is right there, okay? You can see the piston moving in here. So the piston is moving up and down. You have your intake port right here, and you have your exhaust port right here, okay? Reed valve gets attached on the bottom of it. So this is how this piston goes, the engine actually, sorry, this is how it gets held together. You have the carburetor at the bottom. You got air filter right here. You have the carburetor which mixes the air, fuel, well, the oil is mixed in the oil, oh, sorry, the oil is mixed in the fuel before you put it in the, in the tank. Uh, the purpose of the carburetor is to mix the air and uh, oil fuel, okay? And then you have the reed valve. So here is a reed valve, okay? This is the reed valve. I'm gonna take this apart and show you how the reed valve works. So I've taken the, the nuts off here that hold the reed valve onto the carburetor. So the reed valve, the way it works is, here's the back side, here's the carburetor side of it, here's the engine side of it, okay? So this is this pink piece that you see at the bottom. It's this piece right here. That's what I'm trying to show you here. So that's a reed valve. So what happens is when the piston goes up, when this piston travels up, it creates a low pressure here. Low pressure, same as vacuum, it creates a low pressure here. And these metal plates, the reed valves, they lift up. So they lift up, okay? So they lift up and they let, all four of them, and they let air fuel and oil mixture to enter the bottom of the piston, okay? So I'm gonna start explaining the rest of the stuff with the model. Okay, so let's see how it works. So you have to remember that there, there will be a cover here. This whole thing will be covered, okay? So 
The piston starts at the bottom dead center, so piston is all the way down. Okay? So it doesn't matter which way I turn the crankshaft, the piston is going to start moving up. So piston is at the bottom dead center. So at this point, what happens is, as the piston starts traveling up, it creates a low pressure. So that's our first stroke, piston going from bottom to top. So it creates a low pressure at the bottom here. Okay. So what that does is, as the piston starts going up, the reed valve, because of low pressure, it's just a flapper. So the reed valve right here, the reed valve opens. As the reed valve opens, because there's a carburetor attached here, all the air, fuel, and oil mixture, it comes through the reed valve, it comes through this reed valve here, and it starts filling this cavity, the crankcase basically. It starts filling air, oil, and fuel starts filling this part. Okay, so the piston keeps on traveling up and up and up. As soon as the piston rings go past the ports, so right here, so it's closing the port, it closes the intake port, and it closes the exhaust port. So nothing can go out, nothing can enter through here. Now the air fuel from previous stroke that is sitting, air fuel and oil, sorry, that is sitting in here, it starts getting compressed because the piston's still going up. So it keeps on compressing the air, fuel, and oil mixture. It compresses it, compresses it, compresses it, okay? So you have compression stroke happening here and intake stroke happening here. So two strokes are happening in one movement. As soon as the piston goes all the way up, all the way to the top dead center, the spark plug right here on the top, the spark plug ignites the air fuel and oil mixture. As soon as the ignition happens, the gases expand, the, all the air fuel and oil in here, it starts burning, gases expand, they push the piston down because they, they can't escape anywhere. The ports are closed, so it pushes the piston down. So the piston starts coming from top dead center to bottom dead center. It travels down, 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 down. And as the piston is coming down, now what happens to the reed valve? Because the piston is coming down, sorry, right from here, because the piston is coming down, now it's creating high pressure on the bottom. Okay? So it closes the, the reed valve. The reed valve, the flapper just closes. Nothing can escape through there now. Okay? So it starts, it starts, uh, pre-compressing the air, fuel, and oil mixture that is already sitting here from previous stroke. So right now the stroke that's happening is power stroke, which is right here, and it starts pre-compressing uh, the oil, air, and fuel mixture that is sitting here. So the piston comes down, 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 down. As soon as it is, reaches here, it reaches at this point, our ports are opening up now. Okay, because all this is getting pre-compressed, so it finds a path, the oil, air, and fuel mixture that is sitting here, it finds a path right here, it goes through this cavity, it starts coming up here, and it pushes into the combustion chamber. So the new air fuel that is coming, air fuel and oil mixture that is coming in here, what does it do to the exhaust? The previous burnt gases, they get pushed out of the exhaust port. So the piston goes all the way down. Okay, so we had a power stroke happening here and intake stroke happening in the second stroke. So the cycle completes and thus it keeps on moving up and down. Okay, but that wedge that we talked about, it plays a big role. So a piston like this, this is how it sits here. Okay, so what this piston does is as soon as on our power stroke, as soon as it reaches at this point where the ports are clear, okay, so you can see this, these two ports are clear, to prevent the incoming air, fuel, and oil mixture to go straight out the exhaust port, they put a wedge on it. So what this wedge does is, it helps, so imagine a wedge right here, okay, if there was a wedge on top of the piston, what it will do is, it will bring the air, fuel, and oil mixture in, and it swirls it. It doesn't let it go straight out. So it swirls it, and what that does is, as these things are coming in, as the unburned gases or mixture is coming in, all the burned gases, they get pushed out, okay? I hope that uh, explains how a two-stroke, it's a pretty simple concept. Hopefully, I'm able to explain how it works. Um, feel free to question, and uh, we'll try to answer what we can.
Thank you for watching our channel again.